How can you go from this little guy to this okay. in just under 10 minutes? I'm Pokezak494, and today, that is exactly what I will be showing you how to do. Over the years, Game Freak has made it easier and easier with each new game release to accomplish this type of goal, of being able to craft perfected, competitively viable Pokémon. In Pokémon Sword and Shield, this process is streamlined more than ever before, allowing you to take any Pokémon, wild, hatched, caught from a raid, whatever it may be, to do this with. Meaning, you can pluck any random Pokémon from your box regardless of origin for all I or the game cares. I should note before we get started, however, that there is one minor exception to this rule, and that is that you can't lower IVs. So if you're looking for a Pokémon with zero speed to use under the effects of Trick Room, for example, you'd probably be better off just by breeding one for yourself. Now, depending on the type of Pokémon that you're training, you may not need to do every one of these steps that I'll be talking about here, so feel free to skip around as needed. I'll have timestamps enabled so that you can hop around easily if you want. So, without wasting any more time, let's jump into things. For demonstration purposes, I will use this Grookey here, because it uniquely allows me to present everything that I need to, as I'm going to have it hatched from an egg to ensure a perfectly awful specimen. Level 1, 0 Eevees, bad nature, no Dynamax candy, typical ability, bad moveset, and awful IVs. We're going to correct all of this. Remember, you don't necessarily have to do this in a specific order, but I would recommend beginning the evolution process first, just so that all of your options are opened up from the start. So grab your experience candies or train up the old-fashioned way. However your preference, the goal is to get your Pokémon to the highest evolved stage you can reach, whatever that may be in your case. During this process, be sure to look out for any potential moves that your Pokémon may want to learn as it levels up. And if any of the ones you want do pop up, make sure to teach it to your Pokémon now so that you won't have to do it later. As an example, this is the final moveset that I want for my Rillaboom, and as you can see, Knock Off is among these moves. Now, you're probably going to need experience candies for this part. The next step we want to take is to get your Pokémon all the way to level 100. We need to do this so that we can access the Hyper Training feature at the Battle Tower in Winden, which will allow us to max out any imperfect IVs our Pokémon may have. If you find you're short on experience candies at the moment, one of the best ways to obtain them is through Max Raid Battles. Hit up a few of the 5-star Raid Battles and you should get enough candies for the job relatively quickly. Doing this can also help you find Bottle Caps, which are needed in order to complete the Hyper Training process. Talk to this man here on the right side of the battle tower, and for a price of either regular bottle caps or the gold variety, which will affect all stats rather than just one, you'll be able to max out your IVs in an instant. The battle tower's purpose extends beyond just hyper training when it comes to perfecting your Pokémon. You can also use this facility to buy useful battle items, nature altering mints, and even ability capsules. In the case of my Rillaboom, I want it to have an attack boosting and special attack lowering nature, so I'll give it an Adamant Mint. I won't need to buy an ability capsule here, as the ability I'm looking to give my Pokémon is its hidden ability, so I'll have to pick up an ability patch a bit later on. If you currently have the wrong ability on your own Pokémon and want to change it to its other standard ability, however, you should pick one up now. As for held items, this shop also sells Assault Vests, which I'd like to give to my Rillaboom now. One last thing about the battle tower before we move on. This man standing in the corner here is important if you're trying to play ranked battles online with a Pokémon not natively obtained in Sword and Shield. Speak to him, and he'll authorize your selected Pokémon for online use. Keep in mind though, this will reset your Pokémon's entire moveset, so don't waste time getting moves together before you talk to this guy, or you will be very sad. Oh, and if you're a thrifter and want to spend less BP throughout this process, many of these items can actually be found around the map for free at some point during the game, including the Assault Vest, which can be found at the Lake of Outrage, while mints can be found lying around in certain areas of the Isle of Armor. Alright, now let's talk about Eevees. Uh, uh, no, 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 I, not that Eevee. Uh, yes, that, yeah, uh, I'm talking about the stats. 
By far the easiest method available to you to train up your Pokemon in this way is through the use of Vitamins, which, after a little Watt investment put into the Master Dojo on the Isle of Armor, can be bought from the vending machines in the back for a fairly reasonable price. For more precise EV training, you'll also need to be sure to pick up some Feathers as well, which can be found in the waters of the Isle of Armor surrounding the rocks, or on Route 5's bridge. Take a look at this EV spread here. These are the EVs that I'd like to apply to my Rillaboom. As you can see, I'll need 220 in HP, 196 in attack, 12 in defense, nothing for special attack, 76 in special defense, and 4 in speed. So in game, I'll use 22 HP ups, as vitamins grant 10 EVs each, 19 proteins, and 6 muscle feathers, as feathers give out a single EV per use, 1 iron, 2 resist feathers, 4 swift feathers, and 8 zinc. A cheaper alternative to using vitamins for EV training is through the use of Pokejobs, which can be accessed through any PC, and specifically we're looking for the Hammerlock University job offers. Send up to 10 Pokemon at once to train in a specific stat, and repeat until satisfied. You can use date manipulation to speed up this process exponentially, which I will explain how to do in detail in just a bit. One final note about EVs, depending on where your Pokemon came from, they may already have unwanted EVs accumulated. To get rid of these, either begin again at Ground Zero by talking to Lady Clear in the Workout C, or by utilizing EV reducing berries, such as Pomeg berries, for a more exact reduction. On the topic of the Master Dojo, directly to the left of the vending machines can be found a Move Tutor who can teach exclusive moves in exchange for Armorate Ore, such as Grassy Glide, Scorching Sands, Expanding Force, Rising Voltage, and more. Make sure to stop by if he happens to have a move you want. One more thing about the dojo, if the Pokemon you're training is a Pokemon that you want to be able to Gigantamax, be sure to feed it Max Soup while you're here. Don't forget to collect Max Mushrooms around the island beforehand though. By now, we're getting close to the finish line, but there are still a few more things that we need to take care of. First off, give your Pokemon some Dynamax candy. There's really no great place to put this in the video, but if you're gonna want to do this part anyway, sooner or later, uh, why not now? Next, let's get the ability patch for Rillaboom. He's hung on to that Overgrow ability for long enough. For this, we'll have to pay a visit to the Max Lair in the Crown Tundra. Here, for a price of Dynite Ore, which can be gathered through raids and Dynamax adventures, a variety of useful items can be purchased. EXP candies, armorite ore, vitamins, bottle caps, ability capsules, and of course, ability patches. The ability patch is quite expensive, 200 dynai ore to be exact, so it's recommended that you do begin this whole process with a Pokemon that naturally has its hidden ability. Either that, or just stock up on dynai ore by playing a lot of Dynamax adventures. <laughs> But, uh, but hey, we got Grassy Surge now. Alright, we've adjusted our moveset a bit as we've gone along. Now let's focus on rounding out the rest of it. Once again, this is the moveset we're looking for, and this is what my Rillaboom knows currently, meaning we still need to teach it High Horsepower and Fake Out. High Horsepower is pretty easy. All I need is a TR for the move, of which I have already saved up a few. If you don't happen to have the TR you need, your best bet for nabbing one fast is to seek out the Watt Traders scattered across the wild area, and if it happens that none of these guys are supplying what you need, give the daily Watt Trader down in the Crown Tundra Slippery Slope a visit, and see if he understands the assignment a bit better than the others. And if you still can't find the specific TR you're looking for, you'll just have to wait a day. That is, unless you're willing to give Dialga a call and time travel instead. That's right, I'm referring to the date manipulation I alluded to earlier, and doing this is just about as easy as modding your 3DS. While offline, simply interact with an already active raid den, I would use a wishing piece so that the raid doesn't despawn once the date changes, start searching, then return to the Switch's home screen with the game still running. From there, go to System Settings, System, Date and Time, turn off the clock synchronization, and move your day forward by one. Return back in game, quit out of the raid, 
Well, see there, I didn't even take my own advice. The, the rage is despawn. Uh, but the in-game clock should have advanced forward to the next day, meaning that all of the Watt traders have restocked with new items, and you can get back to hunting for your desired TR once again. Taking a look back at my final moveset once more, we can see I've already equipped Grassy Glide, Knock Off, High Horsepower, but still need... Uh, fake Out. Ugh. Some moves are more of a hassle to teach your Pokemon than others, and among them all, Egg moves earn the gold star in that regard. It is a bit of a process to teach a Pokemon an Egg move, but if you need to get one for a Pokemon of your own and it doesn't already know said move, bear with me and I will show you how to do it as quickly as possible. In my case, the first thing I need to do is breed a new Grookey that does have Fake Out. In order to do this, I need to be sure that I have a female Rillaboom, so that it will hatch into a Grookey, plus a compatible male partner that knows Fake Out. A list for compatible partners per egg move can be easily accessed from Serebii's individual Pokemon pages. Once you've obtained the necessary Pokemon, simply deposit the two together at either of the two daycares, then retrieve and hatch the egg they produce. From there, evolve the infant Pokemon to match the same species as the one you were trying to pass the egg move to. Go to the move deleter and forget an undesired move, then go back to the daycare and drop off both your Pokemon together. Stall for the same amount of time as you would for hatching an egg, and when you return to the daycare and take back your Pokemon... Great! You now have the egg move. I guess learning it wasn't so bad after all. So... We've covered moves, IVs, EVs, Dynamax candies, and more. I guess we're finished then, right? Well, yes, but actually no. Technically, yes. We could take this Pokemon into ranked battles, and it should perform just fine, as all the essentials have been ironed out. However, there is a finishing touch that a lot of people seem to miss when team building. That's right, my friends. I'm talking about PP. Did you really think I was going to talk about power points and not make a PP joke? Come on guys, I'm not above that. Welcome to the channel. So, yeah, remembering your PP ups is especially important on Pokemon that use moves with low power points, like Draco Meteor or Hydro Pump, or Pokemon that will sometimes rely on stalling to win endgames, such as Porygon 2 or Eternatus. Though, generally, it is always optimal to max out your PP regardless of circumstance. And that's it. We can now take a look back on the Rillaboom that was just but a few minutes ago a little hatchling and see that it is now the competitively perfected Pokemon that I promised it would be at the beginning of the video. With how easy this process has become, I have to wonder what Scarlet and Violet and its potential DLCs will bring to the table regarding team building, and you can bet I'll be covering these changes right here. Hopefully you guys found this guide helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Gosh, oh. <laughs> oh, that took way longer than I was expecting to make. My gosh, okay. Mm. Yeah? What? You can just... You can just gen them in? Gen is in, like, like hacking? Oh, that... That, um... Mm. That would have been nice to know.